allow me to create a bit of context as we begin. Now, as of today, we have 3.9 billion people. That's more than half of the world's population that is not connected on the internet. It's offline. But since we're in Africa, let's just localize our conversation. 20.7% is the number that we were working with, and it was mentioned as we kick-started the Transform Africa Summit yesterday, is the one that is online. But of course, this number is moving up quickly as uh, the networks continue to be uh, created and partnered into, and of course, we see a lot more uh, on the handsets uh, being availed to our consumers at a cheaper price. Now, experts around the world believe that we're on the brink of a technological revolution that should change ultimately the way we live, the way we think, the way we cooperate with each other, and ultimately the way we work and relate as countries. Now, most of us have had the fourth industrial revolution being repeated over and over over the last couple of, uh, we could say, a year or so. How is Africa prepared as a continent to ensure that when the revolution comes, the fourth industrial revolution, it doesn't pass us as the first, second, and third revolution, as we've been discussing over and over, how exactly we can leverage on the infrastructure that we have to ensure that nothing passes us again. So to create context, we'll just jump straight into our conversation with our uh, dignitaries on the panel today. Her Excellency, Inongewina, Vice President of uh, Zambia. Uh, His Excellency Patrice Ruvada, Prime Minister of Sao Tome. His Excellency Ismail Omar Gwele, President of Djibouti. His Excellency Paul Kagame, President of Rwanda. His Excellency Mohamedou uh, Isofu, President of uh, Niger. His Excellency Ibrahim Boubacar Keita, President of Mali. Right Honorable Emmanuel Isosen Gondet, Prime Minister of Gabon. Right Honorable Egu Obama Asu, Prime Minister of Equatorial Guinea. Distinguished guests in the auditorium and our viewers across Africa. Thank you very much uh, for joining us. We're honored to have you in this pertinent discussion on fast-tracking Africa's digital transformation and how exactly governments represented here can synergize with the business community and the private sector to ensure that we have socioeconomic transformation, not only uh, for ourselves on the management level or the micro level, but for our citizens all through. We'll start off with you, Her Excellency. Now, the fourth industrial revolution, we talked about a knowledge-based economy Prior to that, we talked about uh, where we are now currently in terms of basic services. We've made a lot of progress on the continent, on e-commerce, on health, on provision of services. But now we are saying that we ultimately realize that we have gaps. Gaps in, gaps in healthcare, gaps in inclusion, gaps in affordable services and basic services. Just help us understand from your perspective what case we are making to ensure that we're leveraging ICT to establish real solutions to the actual problems. Um, Your Excellencies, distinguished delegates, I'll just say a few uh, words on how Zambia is uh, embracing the digital transformation culture. And I must say that uh, the young people are leading the way. Zambia has its own homegrown um, solutions, such as Zona. Zapit, e-wallet, mobile money, and Swift Cash. All these initiatives are transforming the way banking, payments, and financial services are being utilized using ICT. In addition, government has also transformed various services under the e-government. Uh, service delivery system, such as payment of taxes online, e-visa application, e-pension, e-company registration, and procurement to reduce the cost of doing business in the country. And the recent uh, introduction of uh, uh, road tolling has also uh, introduced technology in that sector. And as we seek to build a Zambia that is transformed into an information and knowledge-based society, supported by increased access to and use of ICT by all citizens, we hope by 2030 we'll reach our target. ICT is now compulsory 
in our education system. At professional level, we have launched a world-class regional ICT innovation and talent center in Indola, in one of our provinces, with capacity to train up to 10,000 ICT students online at any given time, thereby addressing the talent gap. Um, we are still relatively new entering the technological field, but I think Zambia is making some milestones. His Excellency Mohamed Sofu, President of Niger, would like to hear uh, your view on the same. Just create context for what is working for you and what you think we can leverage on. Bien, je vous remercie. Je voudrais d'abord commencer par uh, remercier le Président Kagame. Let me start by thanking President Kagame for giving us the opportunity to be here today to review together this extremely important issue because it is a revolution, uh, the digital revolution. There have been other revolutions in the world. The first industrial revolution, the uh, steam engine revolution, the world has gone through the electrical revolution and today we are in a revolution which will change the relationship within the social setup. It is true that Africa has not been involved in all these revolutions and the Niger should not stay away from this revolution. We have decided in Niger to invest quite a big amount in the digital area. First, creating infrastructure. We invest in fiber optic. We have established a national network and we are also undertaking interconnections with neighboring countries at the, the international level. We have a devoted structure for the digital development, and we are, trying, we are now undertaking the development of uh, the involvement of youth in the area of uh, new information technology. There are several apps which are already undertaken in Niger and which uh, meet the needs of our population with regard to health, agriculture, with uh, tele-irrigation management and, of course, in the area of communication. You know that uh, in our meeting here, we are supposed to deal with smart cities, and this should be done within the uh, framework of uh, sustainable or smart cities, sustainable smart cities. And uh, there are other initiatives undertaken in uh, major cities in Niger, and especially in the capital city, Niamey, where we provide free Wi-Fi connections in uh, public spaces. In these cities, we are also attempting to establish tele-irrigation for the green spaces in the city, in the city of Niamey. So there are several applications, several apps which are being undertaken in Niger, and we have noticed that we have a lot of youth, young talents who have initiatives in these areas. I came with a group of uh, young people to attend this meeting. Meeting, and these youth are involved in marketing video games and the, the drone technology. So Niger is becoming, in the case of uh, the drone technology, Niger is becoming a pioneer. And uh, this will help uh, in the areas of uh, security, agriculture, so Niger is not staying away from this revolution, and we think that Africa will be fully involved in this revolution. In order to achieve maximum result, 
In Niger, for our people, we need more integration among African countries, more interconnection, and this is very important. It will help us exchange our experiences in agriculture. So once more, I renew my thanks to President Paul Kagame. Thank you very much. Right, thank, you for, uh, thank you for that. Um, of course, key to most of these conversations we are having is information and ensuring that uh, collection of information uh, replicates now to the success we anticipate. I'll throw uh, the question now to His Excellency Ismail Omar Gwele, President of Djibouti, to just uh, guide us through opening remarks on what you think uh, could be the way forward even as we continue to talk about most of our ambitious projects. Merci. Uh, Thank you very much. I would like in turn to thank President and my brother Kagame for having taken this initiative. First of all, to establish this forum, this uh, Smart Africa Forum, and uh, for having thought of undertaking this at the continental level so that we do not uh, be kept aside, or we do not miss the digital revolution initiative. If each of us individually undertakes efforts so that uh, the continent should not miss this uh, digital opportunity, we need to create some space that will help establish linkage among all these initiatives so that there are a number of initiatives for sharing responsibility. So Djibouti, within the framework of Smart Africa, chose to establish data centers. We have more opportunities than the uh, number of our countries with regard to connectivity through fiber optic and uh, intercontinental, intercontinental cables, marine cables. It seems to me that this digital revolution is a gathering speed, and Africa needs to be able to take, the to take the necessary steps, starting with the school. Schooling, giving the youth and the children the opportunity from their young age, that is from primary school, to become familiar with this tool, which will give them many opportunities so that from secondary school they will start learning what we call coding or programming. And we will develop the talents, and it will be possible for us, like the other continents, to take our rightful place in this revolution and in this economic and social development. And we will also use the digital tool in fighting unemployment. Les gens qui réfléchissent à ce, à ce phénomène With the help uh, of people who will review il est temps, and il est discuss temps de, these issues, we think beaucoup plus vite, it is high time plus vite, to speed up the process, les fonds nécessaires, to gather vision, the necessary le, le, funds, politique, to have the vision and the political nos, will uh, la, that will uh, lead us to our people, our talents, our talents and de, our workers de, de la, la compétition give them the possibility to compete with the world and to involve our people numérique. in this new trend. Thank you very much, uh, Your Excellency. Now, it's clear with the opening sentiments that we've received uh, that we are on the same page, but a lot still needs to be done. Now, key to integration, of course, is communication. And with that, we'll segue straight into the One Network area. 
As of 6th of March, we saw uh, six countries uh, from West Africa implemented the one network area. In the East African uh, region, we implemented it within ourselves. Now, across the regions, we saw Gabon and Rwanda pick up this particular uh, conversation on the one network area, and the calls were subsidized. So it's clearly not an interoperability issue, it's not a cultural issue, and it might not be a financial issue. So I'll throw this question to Right Honorable Ego Obama, so Prime Minister. Um, we'll throw it first to uh, Right Honorable Emmanuel Isose Ngondet, Prime Minister of Gabon, on just helping us understand, as a continent, where are we with the progress of the one network area? Before I respond to your question, please allow me, in turn, to say how grateful we are to President Paul Kagame for establishing conditions for these meetings to take place. These are gatherings which are very important for African countries because it helps our leaders, our governments to have exchange of views and experience in these areas and through these exchanges to share experience, and this sharing with will, of course, enable African countries, and this relates to your question, that is, enable African countries to uh, come up with a global and collective solution Je voudrais aussi to exprimer this les regrets challenge. du président de la République like gabonaise, son excellence Ali Bongo Liba, dont l'engagement pour le développement Odin numérique n'est plus à démontrer et qui aurait bien voulu uh, être là. Ce qui est important aujourd'hui, c'est well de considérer uh, it is important to consider or to review the digital revolution as a, an integral part of our economic development. It will not be possible for us to develop the development without involving communication and digital communication in D'abord, la création d'un écosystème attractif, un attractif permettant aux opérateurs économiques de s'intéresser aux opportunités d'investissement que présente cet écosystème the investment uh, sector, and also to make sure that uh, the actors, both, both public and local actors and private operators, to work together in launching projects which require or that need to be put in place. Uh, this leads us to the need to establish the basic infrastructure, and uh, I will not dwell on this, but I would like to just stress two things. First of all, the market. In order to significantly develop in African countries such uh, opportunities in the areas of new technologies of information and communication, we need a market, a continent-wide continent market, which will lead us to consider direct connections among the countries in the continent, just like Gabon and Rwanda have done. Today we know that there is a solid communication channels between Gabon and Rwanda, and this facilitates not only communication but exchange of information. If such a market is broad, it can incite private operators to involve, to get involved in the various uh, operations launched. Whether this is the involvement, if, if the involvement of uh, the uh, public or private communities is not sufficient, it requires investment, wide, broad investment not only through our private-public partnership, but through private investment, private 
investment, the main concern of African countries, African governments, should be to establish channels of prosperity to develop projects leading to satisfying or meeting the needs of the population. Yesterday, we heard that presentations which dealt with the sectors like uh, health, water, energy, transportation. And I think that this is uh, what is important, that is uh, having direct connections to uh, make African markets more effective and systems to attract the participation of the private sectors and sharing experiences among the various countries. Now, during the last Transform Africa Summit in uh, 2015, we held a similar conversation when we just kick-started the One uh, Network area. And I remember there were some uh, very pertinent questions on how exactly we'll be able to work it out. And it seems that uh, that dragged on a bit too long, but we're trying to understand where we are so we map out where to go. So I'll throw this question to His Excellency President Paul Kagame, hosting president. Given that uh, we didn't pick up this uh, conversation as hurriedly as we anticipated we would after the last uh, Transform Africa Summit. Can we envision an Africa with a real one network area? And if so, how soon? Let me uh, start by thanking uh, my brothers and sisters, uh, the leaders of our continent who are here for honoring us with their presence uh, in this uh, very important summit, a summit that uh, addresses matters of transformation, transformation of our continent. And the digital transformation uh, is like any other transformation, but the added value is that it helps people to achieve transformation faster. And uh, in fact, it may uh, reduce the cost as well. Uh, and, and that should be, it comes as a package. You address a number of things in order to, to be there. But the, the problems of Africa are various in nature, um, but it keeps coming to one thing for all of us to try and address. You, you talked about uh, the meeting we had in 2015 uh, and, and the desire and the need, in actual fact, uh, for us uh, to integrate, we, we have talked about different kinds of integration. Uh, integration is broad, but it really has one very important meaning. It means that people are connected, people are working together, people see themselves all as beneficiaries and contributing uh, together to what benefits them. So the delay that has been there, uh, I must say, has not been because of technology. It's not lack of it. It's not lack of knowledge. It's, 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 uh, well, in Africa, we even lack infrastructure, but that integration hasn't even been because we lack infrastructure. I think it has been because we lack that sense of urgency to make what we already have in place to work for us and work for us as fast as we can have that achieved. Because even before we talked about integration and having one 
network area, there was that possibility in any case, waiting for us to do what needs to be done, and that is just the will to apply it. It, 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 so it wasn't lack of infrastructure. Uh, it, it wasn't even lack of understanding of the importance of creating that one network area that would serve us very well. I mean, it's um, even when we were coming to start when we started, a number of countries in this region of East Africa already have created that area that serves them as one. There are lots of arguments, debates, and maybe some people genuinely either feeling that they were going to lose, where, while others are gaining, but I thought that maybe would have been a result of lack of understanding. But I think some of the matters involved are simple to understand and have been explained. In actual fact, everybody benefits, be it the people who have made investments in these technologies, uh, be it the ordinary citizens, so the private, the sector, the government, the citizens, everybody benefits. In fact, that is what we found out uh, having the costs go down, enabling more people to, to be able to, to communicate, and uh, revenues also going up for those people who had made the investments. Maybe ben uh, profits didn't go as, as high as people would wish because sometimes when people make investments, and this will be very few people, not all of them, they want to make investments and then make a kill on the side of profits. They want to profit as much as they can. They are not willing to have uh, uh, reasonable profits so that the benefits spread to more people than otherwise it should be. So, but that problem was resolved. So the delays are more on the side of people engaging with one another and all of us doing what we know we need to do in order to, to, to benefit. So it, it, it's just the will in other words, the political will applying across public, private sectors, and without really affecting business, affecting investments uh, in any major way. So I, I think the hope is there. You are talking about that as well. The fact that we have five, six countries now working together, and then you have uh, in this region, uh, and then you have Rwanda and Gabon, which is on the other side, already having decided to work together uh, and make sure that when you travel from Rwanda to Gabon, you don't have to pay for roaming charges. You, you, know, you pay the same as you are in Rwanda or as you are in Gabon. They, as you said also, in West Africa, that is happening. Well, maybe we need to go step by step. We could go faster. I wish we could go faster, but the fact that already some things are happening is a good sign of what is possible, what is achievable. Uh, so I think we, we need to continue from there, and, and, but with a sense of urgency and uh, understanding that Africa, we are really left behind uh, in many instances by other regions of this world. And I don't think uh, it's because Africans, we are incapable 
of doing things uh, the way we should and, and be where others are or even go beyond. I, I don't think so. Uh, so we need to address some of the other things. Yes, in some areas of infrastructure, we still have problems. We need to invest in infrastructure. But I think we need to invest more in our political will and sense of urgency, uh, which will speed up everything else. In fact, starting with what we already have and what is possible within our means that we don't yet have, we can help uh, speed up that, and, and, and I think that will serve us a lot of good if, if we did it. So, and I think that's the importance of having uh, our leaders, uh, the leaders of our continent here in this discussion. They bring a lot uh, to that kind of uh, conversation, and everybody, uh, all of us, go home uh, having learned uh, one thing or two, or even learning uh, about things we know already uh, and being reminded that uh, we need to do something in order for us to be where we want to be and where others have taken it for granted in actual fact. And by the way, many times helped by young, talented Africans. You know, you find... Uh, young, talented Africans are doing a, a lot of good work outside of this continent uh, and, in fact, helping deliver on some of the uh, promises in, in those other countries or areas of uh, the world we live in when we are here begging. And uh, uh, so we, we need to find a way of, of rearranging things and uh, trying to do things as fast as we can. Thank you very much. Now, His Excellency, the President has uh, mentioned the issue on uh, young, smart Africans, which now brings us to the issue on smart employment. At the World Economic Forum that was held both last year, this year in Durban, we had the conversation that about 7.1 million jobs in the world in most of the richest economies and our developing economies as well, could be lost through redundancy and automation as we move forward in the ICT sector. Now, the report went on to say that even if we lose the 7.1 million jobs, there are about 2.1 million jobs that will be created in the professions of tech, and of course professors and a lot more that are teaching well in within the line of tech. But if our infrastructure is not well established, how are we going to leverage on these particular numbers to ensure that the 2.1 million jobs that are being created globally, Africa has a bulk of that number? Which brings me now to um, His Excellency Patrice Tovar, uh, Prime Minister of Sao Tome. What do you make of that conversation and leveraging advancement in tech and ensuring that our employment numbers are still manageable? Thank you. First of all, I was, I was looking for Portuguese translation. I'm coming from a Portuguese speaking country, so no Portuguese, no Swahili, no Hausa. So I have to choose between French and English, and uh, I will choose French. So this brings us to the issue of what kind of revolution are we really talking about? In my opinion, I think culturelle. it is a cultural. Revolution. Uh, but before getting into that, please allow me uh, in Rwanda, my turn to thank Paul Kagame, Rwanda uh, and here uh, more specifically President Kagame who has allowed us in very good conditions to come here and meet and talk about the future of our continent and I think I don't think there's a better place, a better city, a better country than this one for having this conversation. And this is because beyond any doubt, we here have the vision, we also have leadership, and we also have a sense of urgency because Technology 
in reality allows us to go rapidly and we are actually in an emergency situation. In Africa, we no longer have the time. So what is uh, very interesting for our country, which is a very small country, Sao Tome and Principal, so we have these issues of integration, we have uh, issues of uh, the economic basis, we have a small market, and so we are aware of the benefits that we could get from uh, information and communications technology. As political leaders, we need, however, to be aware of the different steps that we need to take in terms of public policy. We are talking about employment. Yes, employment will allow us uh, to create employment, but we need to be aware of one thing, and this is that we are seeing that the penetration rate for electricity is still very low. So in our country, we are at 85% of penetration for the energy sector, but we are aware that technology is going to demand for more energy, and we are also aware of the climate impact, and so we need more energy, but we also need more clean energy. So in terms of public policy, we are very much aware of what technology could bring in all the areas, but we are still uh, very aware that we need to make more investments in the energy in our country and in the continent. Secondly, and this is why I'm talking about a cultural revolution, in our country, we feel that technology uh, helps us to have more social cohesion. And this is because if you don't have employment, you have social issues. Technology enables us to have this social cohesion through better uh, public management. And this is true because if you want to create employment, you need to have a clean uh, public finance. You need to have an environment, a business environment that is safe. You need to have uh, transparency in public. Uh, affairs. So energy, using technology so we can have better governance, uh, more transparency, and also to strengthen the possibility of having uh, policies that are going to encourage investment and uh, at the same time are going to uh, foster employment. So what I would say, I think we need to share the roles. So as uh, public authorities, we need to continue doing a certain number of things uh, in a serious manner and with a sense of urgency. But the volume of capital that is required in order to create employment and to fund this technology, we actually need the help of the pri private sector. So I think this partnership, private partnership, Public uh, partnerships need to be yeah. built because money is there. There is uh, a lot of money, but we just need to create uh, the environment. And President Kagame talked about one very important uh, aspect, and this is about integration. So it's not just about infrastructure, it's more an issue of uh, political will, oftentimes. And so we need to work with what we already have. So I don't really know whether I've really answered your question. But what I can say is that we need to properly do what is asked of us. We have been asked to build infrastructure in our countries, and we also need especially for our youth to build their trust in their, in their future through education. We also need uh, to pass the message that uh, public authorities are working in the best way possible, and we also need to attract private investments in order to create employment. Uh, 
Uh, it's actually the public sector that's going to help us create employment. So I think technology is going to help us in this first phase have more social cohesion to bring closer the public authorities to the populations and to see that there's more transparency so that the citizens can, at the end of the day, be aware that public management is done in the most transparent manner possible. Thank you. Let's just have a similar conversation with uh, His Excellency Ibrahim Boubacar Keita, President of Mali. Mali has been very passionate about youth and innovation. We'd like to hear your perspective on the same. Merci. Thank you. First of all, in my own turn, please allow me to thank my brother here, Paul Kagame, President of Rwanda. And so it has been said that oftentimes a sense of urgency lacks. We also lack opportunities. And so for him, lucky for us, this is not the case. We also have a will, and the will is in a way an anchor of dignity. So I noted that he talked about an arm that is outstretched. And so uh, this is a special dedication for Africa. And so uh, this dignity is what is making us meet here today. And so we're very comfortable and we are infinitely happy to have Transform Africa that he launched. And so for me, and I feel privileged to speak amongst uh, other leaders who have spoken before me. And so this is an African meeting in the interest of Africa. And uh, we have uh, our brother, Amadou uh, Otherwise, we, we, we would have shown no interest in this meeting. So we have other people from the country. And so here, uh, without uh, wanting to make him shy, probably he's going to sweat a little bit. Um, his friend, I know, and we are going to say that this person is not one these. But no. L'Union internationale des télécommunications. Il a pas de raison. Il l'a fait. Il l'a fait. C'est le cas de lui dire, de lui dire. Il l'a fait. 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 And we need to show Africa in a different light. We need to show our skills. We need not to darken uh, Africa. We need to show our competence. If at all we want to compete in the world, we need to do it at the height of the skills that are available. So in uh, 1970, people were surprised when they heard and they were very amused to hear that Africa is the continent of the future because we had seen different uh, stages that were imposed on us uh, thanks to the microprocessor. And here we are today. And let's think about all the possibilities that are open to us today. For instance, a country like mine, which is a landlocked country, as landlocked as we can be. We don't have any uh, coast. We are a big country. And uh, we have uh, a lot of the population that is a rural population that practices agriculture. And so we need to make sure that the agricultural sector is an engine for our economy because we are very lucky uh, just like our Niger uh, brothers, we have this big river that crosses our country. And so we need to devolve our budgets into this sector. And so we talked about 10% on Africa. 
And so we need to have uh, the political will to go up to 50 percent to develop the agricultural center. And so we have seen that uh, we have produced more than 8 million tons of cereals. And after the harvest of this year, we have actually been able to see how much cotton we have produced. But this uh, would have been vain, in vain if we didn't have communication between the different sectors where we're seeing deficits. And thanks to this new technology, our farmers can communicate and they can exchange. And so we have seen different stocks that we have had. And so we had uh, different stocks that were rotting. And this is uh, happening less today. People's lives have changed. And so today we are also seeing the contribution of our diaspora. We are a country that has known a lot of immigration. And so this diaspora has also contributed to ICT development in our country. And so we also have the fiber optic. We have 2,000 kilometers that are under construction. And we also have for this sector that is very promising and it's clearly a sector for the future, we have understood that we need to encourage innovation, creation and creativity. And this is why we have supported the creation of startups for the future and all this to say that we do believe in this digital uh, revolution because we have seen uh, not only economic benefits but also social benefits. So we have also uh, aspects like telemedicine in my country and so today it is being implemented. So for instance, uh, a surgeon from Bamako can help his younger brother in Gao, which is a difficult region, to carry out surgery which would have been very complicated without this help. This is actually life-saving and this is why we have seen that this is the way for the future, we need to be uh, engaged and we are determined and I would simply like to say here, bravo to your whole team that is here for everything that you have done up to here that is making Africa go forward. So we need to have an Africa that believes in itself. We need to not just uh, be beggars, as I've already said, but to say Africa is di it's dignified and Africa is going forward. Thank you. Thank you for making the case for smart investment as well. Now, let's hear from the Right Honorable Ayeguo Obama, Supreme Minister of uh, Equatorial Guinea. We've had the case of the infrastructure. We've had the case on the political will. We've had the case on uh, communication and integration on the same and youth and innovation. Just help us understand from your perspective, from the Equatorial Guinea perspective, what low-hanging fruits, what we could take advantage of currently to leapfrog into most of these uh, ch um, challenges that we are putting upon ourselves or challenges that we anticipate we'll be facing. Muchas gracias, distinguido moderador de este encuentro. Thank you very much, Mr. Moderator. Habría sido it would have been a great honor for me to speak English. No, in Spanish, sorry, but I'm going to speak uh, French so that I can make understanding easier to all of you present. So I'm going to speak to give you the message of the Republic of Guinea His Excellency, Excellence, President Paul Kagame. Your Excellency, President Paul Kagame. Thank you very much for this invitation. Thank you very much for your courage. And thank you for this meeting organizations, distinguished participants. I would like, first of all, to give you the message of 
qui n'a pu faire cette année de déplacement sur Kigali, retenu par une mission à l'étranger et qui m'a demandé de vous transmettre ce remerciement et surtout ce vœu de plein succès à ce grand rendez-vous annuel africain. In this big annual Le sommet in Transform Africa, Africa. The Transform en est donc Summit à sa troisième édition et comme les précédentes, edition, nous pouvons déjà like nous réjouir de grandes mobilisations des participants des différents secteurs, mais aussi de la recherche des termes qui les envisagent, de la possibilité d'échange d'expériences durant during the different sessions that have been on the program. This third edition of the annual Transform Africa Summit has brought together leaders from the government, from different companies and international organizations in order to have intense collaboration so that we can support digital revolution on the continent. This summit that has as a theme smart cities fast forward your Excellencies, distinguished Notre participants, forum our forum here is happening one year after the 26th World Economic Forum for Africa uh, that we also had here on 12 May 2016, during which participants had talked about uh, different issues around connectivity and sharing of uh, resources through transformation. So all this today confirms uh, the work that the African countries have done, and we have also seen the interest on the continent from the rest of the world. The digital revolution in Africa is actually going on. And our continent is developing, and so we are seeing innovations for the last few years when it comes to technological advances. The continent today has a lot of potential in terms of the number of users, and we also see a very innovative offers. And for us, the government. This domain is actually an affirmed priority and also an opportunity that we need to take advantage of. In what concerns my country, the Equatorial Guinea, we adhere totally to this continental revolution. With the UNDP, our government has been able to develop for the last few years an important new technologies program for innovation, information and communication in order to facilitate best access for the youth to these new technologies. Nous avons récemment créé we une école recently created a higher education institute for technology in the peace city called Giblo, and so this new institute is open to all Africans. And so we invite all students from all over Africa who would like to come and attend this school. We can also add that we have an informatization and administration center for daily usage of technology for different sectors like health, finance, education, and others. But we are also aware that we need to put in place more measures and we are committed to that. Your Excellencies, distinguished participants, with our population that is more and more youthful, which is very educated and very entrepreneurial, we have seen a rapid development in our country, and this revolution is going to support us, and so we have seen this in the big cities on the continents. And so we can here say that the digital revolution is actually happening in most of the uh, big cities in Africa, in the economic structures, in the service, which are going to 
uh, experience change in their development and so this dynamism is needs to be amplified and so we have a lot of work we need to work through new and smart and better ways of managing our cities that take into account the characteristics of each and every person and are also going to generate new uh, benefits. And so we're going to also be able to have a youth and citizens who are well equipped with knowledge. The summit here offers the possibility of sharing the models that have succeeded in different African countries. And so we need to copy what is already working in other African countries. And so we simply need to define the legal uh, framework. And so the summit also offers us a possibility to think together and find solutions to the different challenges that we have been faced with. And so we need to uh, take care of these challenges. So for instance, the issue of access of uh, digital talent, and this is a major uh, concern in most of the countries. Other challenges that we have, uh, how can we improve the access of services and documentation of participation of citizens? Another challenge is linked to the difficult economic context, which could have negative impacts in terms of slowing down the process. With all the rich, rich richness that we have and the expertise, and we also have uh, a lot of experience, I am convinced that we are going to have solutions, or at least beginnings for solutions. So we already have uh, the blueprint, and so we need to have all our countries agree about the development in the continent. So my president uh, wishes you a lot of success in this forum. Thank you. We have to close, but uh, thank you very much to uh, the panelists who've joined us here, your excellencies and right honorable ministers. I've been your host, George Ndurango from uh, CNBC Africa. Thank you. Thank you.